Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me clearly and can see me, but seeing me is not really the most important thing, but I will have some uh, video transmission for you later on to see something hands on. And first of all, I want to share my screen with you so that you can see my presentation. I hope that works now. And first of all, um, thank you for inviting me for this talk. Um, I've heard many interesting things today about JSX Graph and I have to say that my project is just about an application of JSX Graph. It is not about hardcore JSX Graph coding or things like that. It's really just an application. And I want to talk about wireless sensors um, built using a ESP32 microcontroller combined with JSX Graph. But first of all, let me tell you something about the idea behind this project. This project um, is powered by physics lessons because in physics lessons, um, there is one main idea to make physics lessons more learner-centered. And making physics lessons more learner-centered is really close connected to how to perform experiments in physics lessons. And one idea is that every learner has the possibility to perform his own experiments. And up to now, and so um, Carsten stated, I want to combine the real world with the digital world. Uh, up to now, uh, we have the situation that data acquisition for physical experiments can be done digital, so we use digital data acquisition tools. And our project started um, about four years ago, and there were um, devices that you can use for data acquisition in physical experiments. Uh, here you can see on this slide um, one of those tools. Um, it's just an example from Vernier, the LabQuest 2. Meanwhile, there exists a LabQuest 3. And these tools are nearly all built the same. Uh, you have a screen with a small computer inside and a sensor or a bunch of sensors to acquire uh, data and graph this data, do some calculations with this data. But the worst thing about that is these tools are really expensive. Uh, if you use this, um, thing on the, on the, in the image, um, it costs about 500 euros, I think. And some years ago, a colleague and friend of mine, Werner Heubeck, um, had the idea we should make that more simple and affordable. And he was the father of this project. Uh, unfortunately, Werner died that year in the beginning of that year, but without him, this project would not exist. And I won't do anything to keep this project running and um, improve this project. But without him, this project idea would not exist. And he um, had the idea to use a microcontroller with sensors and an SD card for data acquisition and storage. After data acquisition and storing the data on the SD card, his idea was to read the data and evaluate or visualize the results with JSX Graph or Excel. And one day he came to my office and said, can we make it more comfortable for the learner that you don't have this SD card, take this SD card out of um, the circuit where the microcontroller is put on and put it into a PC and read the data and visualize or evaluate it. And so we started to build up another version of his idea. And we said, okay, let's use microcontrollers. They are pretty powerful, pretty cheap, have many interfaces so you can connect nearly anything 
nearly any electronic device which generates data. And so these microcontrollers nowadays are really widespread. We have uh, different ones and oh, I think my slides which are a bit fast. Step back. Yes, I go here back again. You have these, for example, three types of microcontrollers. Well known is the Arduino platform, Arduino Uno for as one example. Then from the Chinese uh, company Espressive, there are different microcontrollers, for example, the famous ESP8266 and the ESP32. And also sensors are really cheap and you get sensors for nearly acquiring any kind of data. And these sensors can be connected to microcontrollers as well. For example, sensors for detecting ultrasonic. Here is a sensor which transmits and receives ultrasonic. This is quite perfect for measuring distances. Or a temperature sensor, this is a really small thing. Or you have multi sensors like this BME 280, which is able to measure relative humidity, barometric pressure, and ambient temperature. So everything was here concerning the hardware, and we had um, to develop a use case how data acquisition and evaluation should work. And our use case, oh, again, too fast. Our use case was a learner should use a mobile device, for example, a smartphone or tablet. He should connect his device to a wireless sensor box via a wireless network. And he should use a web interface provided by the sensor box on his device for data acquisition. Uh, I will show you such kind of sensor box and uh, my director for this talk is Andreas. Uh, Andreas, maybe you can switch the video um, to my other cam so that we can see what we have here. This is um, this kind of sensor box. I hope you can see it. It's just a black box with an USB cable. This USB cable is connected, for example, to a power bank, uh, just providing it with electronic power. And here is a sensor. This sensor is a temperature sensor. It's the same sensor inside. I've shown some slides before. Um, it's just inside. So this was our, I would say, prototype of such a sensor box. And now I will show you how to connect the mobile device to the sensor box. The idea is to have a wireless network where this smartphone or tablet can be connected to. You see this wireless network here, I've made screenshots for this because it's a bit hard to show in this kind of presentation, but I think you can see it this way much better. Then after selecting this wireless network, I will be connected to it with my smartphone. And so I'm connected to this network uh, and I can show here some details. And automatically there pops up um, a website um, where you can start the software on the sensor box. It's just a web interface. And after saying, okay, I want to start to work with the sensor box, we will have a website where we can acquire data, where we can graph data and things like that. Um, why did we do it? this way. Uh, we wanted to avoid that students have problems or learners have problems to connect to a device. Um, for example, knowing some IP address of the device, uh, open this IP address in their browser. So we use the technology, I think 
all of you know that it's called captive portal technology. And for example, hotels use that uh, to present your initial website before connecting to the internet through their wireless network. And we use the same technology here. So the next step, it's just a use case, but I show you already the solution for it. Uh, the next step is being on this website and using the data acquisition tool. And um, maybe Andreas, you can switch back to my screen presentation uh, but, or highlight my screen presentation because here you can see uh, the web interface. It's now running on my PC I'm doing the presentation with, but it also runs the same way on a mobile device. And here I can select the sensor I want to use for my measurement. Um, this is a very late version of uh, our tool here. You can select different sensors. For example, I select this temperature sensor and start measuring temperature. And here you can see actual temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. Um, this is not high accuracy temperature measurements. There is some uh, offset in this measurement. Uh, you can calculate uh, this offset, but it does not depend for the experiment I want to make now. Um, so you can see, OK, temperature is here. And I use this ice spray and put some ice spray on our sensor to look what is happening with the temperature. OK, we have minus 1 degree about zero degrees. OK, so let's switch to the next page. And here you can see the reason why I'm here. We are using JSX Graph for plotting the temperature. So we are acquiring real-time data and plot a graph of the temperature. And for example, you can make experiments about the melting point of ice or cooking some water, what happens if it's near to 100 degrees centigrade. So I think what we can do is pretty clear. And we also have a third page here. And here we have the data. Um, I have plans that you can download the data as a CSV file or things like that. This is not implemented already. But I think you can see what we can do here. We can uh, also use another kind of sensor, for example, for barometric pressure. We take this sensor and we see the pressure here in hectopascal. And if I move the sensor board a bit higher, I'm standing up to have maybe a height of two meters above ground. So we see the value is lower. And if I put it down on the ground, we can see, OK, the value may be a bit higher. So this is a pretty nice solution of acquiring data. We can also make other experiments using this distance sensor. I don't want to show you uh, that because time is running out, I think. But I switch back to my presentation. So let's have a look at the presentation. We have seen these three steps on this slide, the three uh, views or tools we can use with this measurement environment. And what is done on the hardware side? We use or we used in the beginning ESP8266. Meanwhile, we are using ESP32 microcontrollers. Why are we using them? They have several digital I.O. ports, so we can connect many sensors or some sensors. They have also analog inputs. They have different bus systems supported, for example, uh, one which is uh, really famous and necessary is I2C because many sensors are using I2C um, or one wire. We have in our test setup, um, we have seen um, these sensors with I2C and one wire and one which is directly connected to digital pins. 
Then we have a Wi-Fi interface on these uh, microcontrollers. And this is really important to get the connection, to connect the learner's device with the sensor box. And we have at least two megabytes of memory to use. And that's enough. And we have one big advantage. Uh, these things are really cheap. It's about 10 euros to buy one of those microcontrollers. What kind of software is running on the microcontroller um, or what services are running on the microcontroller? First of all, we have this Wi-Fi access point. You've seen this um, in the slides before. Um, we also have a DHCP and a DNS server to provide basic networking infrastructure, especially, for example, also including this captive portal functionality. We have a data acquisition controller, which is running on the microcontroller. And we have a web server to provide the web-based user interface for the user. So I think 10 years ago, I would have said, or 15 years ago, I would have said, okay, we maybe we need a small server doing that, but that's not really um, actually true. Today, we just need one of those microcontrollers to do that. What about the programming? Um, we used in the beginning this uh, ESP8266 together with the Arduino programming language. Um, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile means uh, since this week, we are using MicroPython together with the ESP32, the, the switch to ESP32, we made um, about one and a half year ago. And this week um, I started switching to MicroPython. Um, this is mainly due to um, coding uh, and um, making debugging much easier because uh, using MicroPython uh, on these devices uh, makes it possible to debug the code on the device um, to have error messages on the device the interpreter is throwing. And um, you don't have to upload a pre-compiled binary to the device, which is nearly undebuggable uh, as you do if you use Arduino programming language. The libraries for all these services I stated before, Wi-Fi, DHCP, DNS, Captive Portal, and Web Server are all available in these products in MicroPython and in Arduino, these libraries are available. You can get all this stuff on GitHub. So JSX graph, why JSX graph? Um, it was about 10 years ago, Alfred uh, has shown me the example you can see on the right, pic on the left picture. Uh, it is a real-time graphing tool and uh, I was really astonished how easy it is doing real-time graphing. Uh, Alfred did it uh, with a random data generator, um, I think powered by PHP on the back end. And I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing the same, but uh, I don't take random data. Uh, we take data from these pretty sensors and just visualize that. JSX graph is really perfect for uh, this kind of application because of its pretty small footprint. Um, we have 600 kilo kilobytes of data for the JSX graph core. This can be easily stored in the file system of the microcontroller. This is pretty easy uh, doing it uh, with MicroPython. It's a bit harder doing it with Arduino. Uh, on Arduino side, and because of performance, um, because of the I.O. performance of uh, the file system, we uh, used compressed JSX graph core. Uh, meanwhile, using it with uh, Python, we take the uncompressed uh, JSX graph core. Uh, so we have just one megabyte of data. Um, for the web interface. And um, we have overall um, about 
1.3 or 1.4 megabyte of data, um, including all the libraries we had to upload on the microcontroller if we do it with Python. So it's easy to use um, JSX graph for plotting data together with, with microsensors, and we can nearly do it in real time. Uh, one thing I have to state using MicroPython um, is not the best for performance, but for uh, our frequencies of data acquisition, it's pretty perfect. So finally, I can show you here, if you're interested in uh, a list of the libraries we are using currently, the first two libraries are for web server and DNS. Um, DHCP, um, Wi-Fi access point and things like that are already pre-built in this MicroPython um, included and the last two libraries are for the BME 280 sensor and for the distance sensor using ultrasonic. Uh, I don't want to show you uh, details about code, but I just move one time to this window so you can see here. This is all which is uploaded to our wireless uh, to, to our microcontroller here in this folder there is anything we need for providing the web page powered by JSX graph and all this here is for the functionality it's mainly the python code so that's it uh, I thank you very much for your attention. And if there are questions, I think we have time to answer these questions after the next talk. Uh, I've seen there are some questions already on the chat and I will prepare the answers and we can talk about that um, during the discussion or I will post some answers on the chat. So thank you very much all.